Hello and welcome to my VV Beta graphics tutorial. Uh, my name is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto. And in today's tutorial, I would like to share how to read uh, like large scale videos, multiple large scale videos inside VVVV Beta. And there's a few different formats that I would highly suggest if you're interested in reading that kind of stuff. Uh, so I want to share how they act different in VVV. Uh, by the way, uh, I've been quite uh, quiet recently, uh, so I haven't really been sharing much tutorials, and that's because this Node Festival was just happening like a few weeks ago, and it was a big, big deal for me, and I was so excited following it. I also gave a workshop there, which was amazing. And also, I think VVV, uh, so they just also announced uh, the brand new uh, VVV Gamma, together with uh, Stride Engine support. And I think I had a, one tutorial in past explaining what Stride Engine does together with VV Gamma. And it was a huge thing and there were a lot of different and cool uh, webinars during this festival. So if you haven't followed uh, this festival, I think uh, these recorded videos will be released very soon. So you might be able to follow those uh, webinar recorded videos to learn how VV Gamma works. And I believe like in future, I think a lot of things are going to happen in gamma rather than a beta. So right now in this tutorial, I'm trying to focus on beta because beta still is the most powerful uh, graphical, like real-time tool for me. And I think for the market as well. And I even, even comparing to touch designer, there's still many things that we can do in VV beta. And I believe it's very important to share that kind of knowledge just before going to gamma, but I'm also starting, I'm planning to start playing around with gamma. So I might start a new channel, uh, explaining how gamma works and how I learned gamma and that kind of stuff. So please keep your eyes on this channel. Um, okay. So let's get started with today's topic. So I'll just small down these render and also the patch here. Okay, so to, in today's uh, tutorial, I'm gonna share a few different ways to read uh, um, videos inside VVV. And I think through this uh, tutorial, I've shared uh, multiple times on how to, that I've been using this fast stream VLC, so which is this one. Oh, wait. Uh, wait a second. I need to change this file stream on uh, this one. Yeah, so file stream of uh, VLC, this one. And by using this one, you can actually read uh, quite a lot of video format. So I think this one is included in DX11 pack. So if you haven't installed DX11 pack, please install that one. But by using this, we can actually read whatever format like MOV, and before, depending on if VLC works with that, you also need to install VLC to make this fast stream of VLC work. So please make sure you install VLC. Then it has really broad uh, format support. So this is actually like in basic, this is already enough. So this is the output of the fast stream VLC. But if you're interested in, for example, reading uh, like tons of, uh, how do you say, videos. For example, I have a past project that I've done with Nike and this one, I had to make a patch that could import like various 6K videos in the same time, full HD videos. And um, to make this kind of thing work, I was using this format called DDS. So I want to explain what how DDS works inside VVV. And also, if you're interested in VJing, uh, VV also has a plugin to may let a uh, HAP format works. And I think if you're VJ, you might know this HAP format. It basically only, I think uh, VDMX is a VD, uh, VJ software, and I think they're the one who created this format. But it works on GPU, and you can handle like tons of 4K or 6K video in the same time. And um, so this guy uh, uh, was in. Lev, a really smart guy, made this plugin for uh, demolition ha uh, media hat player. Uh, as you can see from this explanation, it says 
depending on your PC capabilities, you can read up to like 4K 120 FPS or 8K 60 FPS or 10K 30 FPS for like tons of them. So yeah, it just depends on your machine or GPU. And this one is, is inside contribution and store. So if you're using for commercial or whatever project, uh, please make sure you pay for this uh, license. So the individual is for 10 euro, company is 200 euros. But I think if you're just playing around, you can also just download this hat player and see how it works on your machine. So today I'm not, uh, so I'm, I'm showing how this works. Uh, yeah. So this one also goes to the PAX folder. So please make sure to install into the PAX folder. And if you don't have any HAP encoder for Adobe uh, CC, uh, they have a GitHub uh, to download the plugin for Adobe After Effects or Premiere or Media Encoder. So download it from GitHub. And oh yeah, and if you're interested in rendering DDS, I'll, I'll I'll go through this later on, but I'll put this link below. But there's also this really nice DDS plugin for After Effects and Photoshop. So I put this one open source, and then I I download this plugin and I just put it in the plugin folder for After Effects, and it it also describes how to install it. So yeah, we'll be using these two for today. Okay. So yeah, this is how the patch looks like. And where should I start this? Um, I'll just play reset, start playing. So there's a few different reasons why I'm using this DDS rather than uh, this file stream, or I'm using HAPS rather than the file stream is that when I use this VLC uh, haps, uh, VLC file stream player, sometimes the beginning of the video uh, is not correct. When I repeat, when I make it loop, it sometimes skips some frame on the fr uh, beginning. Uh, skips some, it skips some frame. And to avoid that, I started looking for it. And that's when I found this DDS. DDS is basically a texture format that reads inside GPU. So what I'm doing here is I'm letting it, so this counter is use, uh, connected to this get spread. And I think this get spread is string. So I'm letting it read like, how do you say? So DDS has certain name for it. So I'm making it read one texture by this, this frame rate so that Whenever I need like specific uh, frame to start, I can just specify this counter, uh, how do you say, default frame. For example, if I want it to start from 100, then if I press reset, then it starts playing from the 100 frame. So I can actually go through like in which frame I want to start and also can specify different frames, like multiple frames, so that if I have like, diff if I want the sequence to start in different position, then I can do that kind of stuff here with DDS as well. Doing this with FastStream is a bit tricky because there's no way to specify. Well, there is a way to specify like this, uh, how do you say, seek time. But if you want to do that with multiple uh, position, seek position, then I believe this reading DDS or D reading PNG or whatever is much like easier than just doing that. Okay, so let let's let, let me start uh, with haps. Um, so I'll just save this and delete it. And I should have of haps uh, navigation. I'll just go to. So I've already installed vvvv uh, beta and new packs. I have this vv demo lay demolition media haps. So here there's a girl power, and it has two girl power. And the first one is half video playback. So this is like a basic playback. And this one is with uh, audio. So I'll just, I won't go through the audio one. I'll just play this half video playback. <laughs> so this is how it starts. This is how the help patch looks like with half video playback. And uh, here we have a place to read uh, how does it happen video format and so I have one 
have video here. So I'll just read this one and make sure you press open, then the video should start playing. So as you can see, uh, this have player uh, has this current frame output, which is pretty nice. I think, yeah, you can also specify like the seek position and things like that. You can also make it reverse. So there's a lot of like, how to say, uh, place where you can tweak. So you can also specify the, uh, the start frame. So for example, if I make it 100, then I can reset, do seek this. Oh, no, this is not the start frame. It has to be the seek frame, seek frame. Then I can make it seek from the 100 frame, for example. So there's a lot of things we can tweak uh, using this hat player. We can also let it read uh, multiple uh, videos here if you put multiple videos here, then we can also read multiple videos in the same time and just plug to different uh, full screen quad, then we can read multiple textures as well. Uh, to render this HAP format, if you have Adobe uh, After Effects, then I'll quickly show how to do that. I don't know how to work uh, with, with the other software. I mainly use Adobe After Effects to render this, but just create a compo, put it in a render queue. Then once you have this inside your render queue, uh, on this output mode, uh, you should be able to specify, uh, where is it? Oh yeah, I have this after codec MOV media player and then in this file format thing, I have a place where I can specify haps. But I think if you download uh, this, uh, how do you say, not this one, this hap encoder Adobe CC, then I think the way it works is, is a bit different. Oh yeah, so you should be able to uh, read it through this format option. So it's a, it works a bit different, but basically if you know how to work with After Effects, it should be quite straightforward. So yeah, and once I've done rendering this image, I can directly read it here. Right now it's full HD, so it doesn't have a big damage on my machine. But if you have, if you want to try using VVV for like VJ usage, then try reading multiple uh, HAPS format. It should still work. And I've I've experienced using 4K HAPS video, for example, and it works pretty well. So there should be any problem reading uh, big image. So this is one suggestion for me. Uh, for today's topic, the most important one that I wanted to share is the, this way of reading, uh, not HAPS, but DDS format. So I'll start explaining about that one. Uh, so show YouTube, beta tutorial and patches, large video. Uh, so here I have this uh, DDS reader and I have DDS rendered and so as I explained already, DDS is a texture format. So that reads inside GPU and DDS is mostly used for like, uh, I think textures for like 3D games um, and it reads in GPU. So it makes things really lighter. And so now I have like 239 frame of DDS here. And the way I uh, rendered this is using After Effects again. And I think it works on Photoshop and Media Coder with that plug plugin, this one. So download this one. And then once you have it here, uh, if you go to this output module, you should be able to specify DDS sequence as an output. And if you go to format option, it has like DXT5 or DXT3. And I'm not sure what, what's different between these, but as far as I know, this DDX5A, this A means alpha. So if you need alpha data, make sure you use this one. Now, if you don't need it, for now I don't need it, so I'll just use this DDX T5 and then RGB format and then just render that as a how do you say, image sequence. And then once it's done, I got it inside here. And then what I did is I used this uh, directory node. So if you type DIR, there should be a node called DIR file folder directory. And what it does is you can specify a folder and make, uh, and specify the mask on some, so the format, for example, if I put JPEG here, then it only reads uh, the JPEG folder in this folder. So right now I'm letting it only read the DDS images, which means I have 240 
DDS image. That's weird. Oh yeah, it's 240 because it starts from 000. So yeah, I have 240 DDS files inside that folder. And then for example, if you have a subfolder, then you can also read it, include subdirectory, for example. Right now I don't need that, so I, I'll just disable this one. Include hidden update. If you have any folder update, then you can also update here. And then once it's done, directory node outputs the file name and the file count. So I'm connecting the file count to the maximum of the counter. And then I'm using this LFO to make sure that it reads, it, it gives this change bang every one frame, which is one divided by 24, because right now I rendered this sequence uh, from After Effects in, in 24 frame. So if you have a video with 30 frame, then you might want to change this to 30, then it should work correct. And also here I'm trying, I'm specifying this main loop as 24, but it, this is not really important for DDS reader because I divided this one with 24 here. So it's not really usable, but if you want to make sure that everything's working fine, and if you're not rendering any particles or like different stuff here and you're just reading images, you can specify this main output, main loop as 24 as well. So then I'm giving that bang to the counter to up. And then, uh, yeah, that's basically what I'm doing here. And then I'm using this get spread uh, string to specify the folder file name or the file texture. And here I'm using this basic file texture DX11 2D to read the, f the images. And then I'm previewing that right here. So yeah, this is the way I'm reading these uh, multiple DDS. And so far I've read like, I think 5,006K 5, images and it still works fine with DDS because DDS uh, works inside a GPU. So this one is very handy and I use this a lot and I think it's really stable if you're using multiple images for like insulation. I high re highly recommend this using this DDS. If you're a bit more lazy, then I would suggest using this HAPS uh, demolition player. Of course, you need to purchase for project purpose. So if you don't have that money for it, then using this DDS is basically for free. So it's quite a good way of using it, I believe. Uh, what else should I share? Um, yeah, I have this one. So for example, when I had um, a project that I wanted so I had tons of DDS, but then I wanted it to start from different position. Then I just wrote up like the starting frame of each video. For example, if I have a long DDS folder with multiple videos in the same place, then I just make sure that, okay, this one starts from 145 frame. This one starts from 235 frame. And then I just change that using get slice and then put it in the maximum of the counter. And then that way you could actually like have like multiple folders. And and I also use this uh, include subdirectory. So then um, even though I have different folders, for example, I had, right now I have comp one, but for example, if I have comp two, comp three with different images, if I use this, then directory node will automatically read that as one spread. So then I had to specify the starting point for them to, to make sure that I could trigger different uh, image sequence using one one directory node and one file, file texture out. So that's what it's doing here. So yeah, today I just wanted to share that DDS is a really reliable format to use in GPI in your in VVV beta if you have a quite strong GPU and this can handle like really big installation video playback and also like the starting point and the ending point will all be, be like frame based so you wouldn't have you wouldn't experience any frame skipping of uh issues for example so yeah that was it for today uh thanks for watching and I'll see you next time